this morning in time to eat conference house of immortality studio we say may your name be exalted in the mighty name of jesus that they will move in the spirit on these subject matters as we have been doing amen god we pray now let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon us let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name i pray and i pray god will bless us in the mighty name of jesus still on the subject matter which is understanding the reason why the born again are missing the gain that is as a born again christian there are certain gain that should begin to find expression in your life and that has been the foundational focus of this teaching that is there are certain things that are supposed to be finding expression in your life because you are born on it and there are certain things that are supposed to be finding expression in your life because you are born again so the focus of this teaching is not the gain of being born on it but the gain of being born again and in the last teaching we emphatically talk about two major things that must be the primary focus of a believer which I call the teaching of faith and the teaching of wisdom. That is, if you want to become relevant in this kingdom, you must be exposed to the dimension of faith and you must also be exposed to the dimension of wisdom. That is, the body of Christ is ordained to be known as a believer. We are believer because we are living by faith. The Bible said the righteous shall live by faith. <laughs> That is, that statement of the scripture can be explained in two dimensions. That is, being the fact that you are righteous is not enough. It didn't say the righteous shall live by his righteousness. It said the righteous shall live by faith. And the same scripture can also be explained that the faith that the, the righteousness that a believer need can only be obtained by faith. The first explanation of that scripture is that as a righteous, it is not enough to be righteous. It is enough to be, to be a man of faith because it is without faith that you can't please God, not without righteousness. So which simply means you can be righteous and not pleasing God if that righteousness is not the product of faith. And also establish the fact that wisdom is a principal thing when it comes to the matter pertaining to the kingdom. Because by faith you receive, by wisdom you maintain what you are freely given. You cannot see the reason why Jesus intentionally grew in wisdom for 18 years before he began to enter into the economy of power needed for his ministry. You know, at times when I look at the current move in the body of Christ, but don't get, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to establish a fact. You will understand my point at the end of my teaching. Which is the move of believers coming together to pray for long. You begin to hear statements like 24 hours prayer chain. 72 hours prayer chain. The question is, is those prayers wrong? No. It is very needed. But the question is the motive. Why many people that gather to pray? The motive behind those prayer chain are very wrong. The motive behind that prayer chain is that they want to enter into the economy of supernatural. But I say this to you, that is no scriptural pattern through which believer has been ordained to enter into supernatural. That is not. The focus of that prayer is to bring men into their inheritance where believer will begin to operate with the straight grace that a man who is who are son of God are qualified to walk in. But I say this to you. That dimension of prayer cannot produce that result. And I say this with honesty. If wisdom is not quickly applied to those movements of prayer it will produce another kind of religion in the next few years. Because 
many people will be will be we got tired of that dimension because it will dawn on many people who are following that dimension that it is not producing the result they want. Because it's a daily it's whereby those that gather people are only using his own personal template to build them, to build his followers. We need to go back to the scripture and see the scriptural pattern through which man has been ordained to enter into his inheritance. <laughs> Jesus was born and in Luke chapter 2 verses 52 the Bible says Jesus was growing in wisdom if you don't grow if you are grown, growing I say this that groaning in the spirit may not produce results a man that grow they are the one that can grow moko <laughs> tolibo the prayer chain of the 24 hours prayer chain, 42 hours prayer chain, is called groaning in the spirit. That is, you are groaning in the spirit. So, you gather men to groom them. But I say this to you, if you don't grow, you can't groom. If you grow without growing, that groaning in the spirit will not produce results. Jesus grew for years, for good 18 years. The Bible said Jesus was growing in wisdom. And in Luke chapter 3, close to the next to the feet to the end of the verse, and the Bible said, and heaven opened. And the spirit of the Lord come like a dove, and it rested upon Jesus. And all Francis came from above and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Get this. Hear him. Now get this. Heaven did not open upon Jesus because he went to do baptism. Uh, services of John the Baptist. Heaven did not open simply because John, Jesus came out at John the Baptist to be baptized. No, 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 no. Men only tried to to put it in that area. But I said this to you, that is not the reason. Understand the statement of God. He said, this is my beloved son. Not this is my beloved child. There are difference between being a child of God and being a son of God. The word son is a language used for the mature child of God. If you, in the land of Israel, it's a cultural language. In the land of Israel, if you give back to a, a, a boy, or you give back to a boy, he's not yet a son. He's a child. Son in the culture of Israel is a title. There is an Age, there is an age you will get to before the conformity and the ordination of sonship will be given to you. So there is a certain age where you will be ordained and called and do a ceremony as a son of God. And one of the cultures is that you must face battle. You must go to the battle and come back. And there is a certain age where you can be allowed to go to battle in the land of Israel. So that was why the book of Isaiah was giving the prophecy that unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. Sonship is a gift. A child is born. But unto us is an authority given based on a certain age. That's what he said. So to them that believe, he gave them the right to be a son of God. The moment you are you believe, you automatically become a, a child of God. But you don't have the right to become son yet. There is an there is a certain age where you will be qualified to be a son of God, and that age has something to do with maturity. I'm talking of physical perspective now. Then bring that something to spiritual realm. Maturity is what determines sonship. Kalimo and wisdom is what determines maturity. <laughs> I repeat, maturity is what determines sonship in the realm of the spirit, and wisdom is what determines is what determines maturity. And that was why the Bible says Jesus grown in wisdom, and he, he was busy growing in wisdom for good eighteen years, and that is what made him to open and say, "This is my son." What qualifies him for sonship is because of the level of wisdom that is available in his life. And it is unfortunate now that men who have not grown in wisdom, they are grown to enter into power. Jesus never received the ordination for ministerial assignment until he grew in wisdom for good years. Can I say this to you? If you have not grown, 
God cannot commit a t- the kingdom resources into your hand. That was why Paul was beginning to give emf- em- emphasis on it in the book of Galatians chapter 4. He said, as long as a child remains a babe, differed not from a slave. Until he grow to a certain stage where he now become a son. That is when heaven will open and say, this is another beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It is not Jesus that is beloved son of God. Jesus is the first beloved son. So before we were born, before Jesus died on the cross, Jesus was the only beloved son. But after Jesus resurrected from the son, and we give our life to Jesus and we are born again, Jesus is no longer the only beloved son. Banjoyeka is another beloved son. <laughs> I don't know for you. So before we were born, because Jesus was the first, he was the first born among the new creation. So, Jesus said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Every one of us, the moment you grow to a certain age, where eternity can begin to perceive the wisdom of God in your life, where the wisdom of God in your life has become aroma in the realm of immortality, you are now a son in the kingdom. And heaven can also utter a certain statement over your life, that this is my beloved son in whom I am also well pleased. When you see a man of God that the burden of Christ is hearing, Eternity has confirmed me to be son. <laughs> because one of the ordinations that prove you to be son in the kingdom is that people will hear you. He say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. There is no advertisement you can do in this kingdom that can announce you. It is eternity that announces a man. And until ever pronounce and say, this is another beloved son. Hear him. No man, even though you place all your poster. And you put it in the old Nigeria, people will not see it. <laughs> ah. So it is unfortunate that men that have not grown in wisdom, they gather and be growing in prayer. Ah, I pray that this move will not fall victim of the mistake that the last move of God fell into. I pray. I pray. I pray. That the move of this season again will not be captured by the spirit of religion and enter into a realm where it will not be consistent with the dealings of eternity because the undressing I'm seeing in, among the youth in the body of Christ now is totally different from what eternity was to bet it. The pregnancy I'm seeing now may give birth to another religion if care is not taken. May give birth to another religion. Because the revival we are talking about, this is not the move. The move I'm seeing now is not the move of the revival. Hi. The fire that will produce the revival of this season is not a fire of rising and falling under the anointing. It's a fire of purification from sin and iniquity. Because this is the errors that the bad move of God fall. We just gather people and want to fall them under the anointing. I will say that is revival. <laughs> so falling under the anointing now is not the evidence of the revival. I, I can't believe we youth of this season is falling into the same error again. We are looking for a generation that will begin to rise under the anointing, not falling under the anointing. <laughs> because what is the advantage of eternity when you fall under the anointing that nothing happened to you? Nothing. You just give glory to a man of God. Nothing happened into your life. The same youth that fall under the anointing last week, fell under the anointing again this week. Your life still remains the same. It's just a glory to the man of God, not glory to Christ. Because the glo- what gives glory to Christ is when your life changed from mortality to immortality. What gives glory to Christ is when your change, your life changed from a mortal man to a spiritual man. So if nothing is happened spiritually about your life, nothing is supernatural about your life, the only thing that you can share testimony about is that you rise and fall under the anointing. I'm using this opportunity to say you are far from the revival that the eternity wants to bet in this season. It's a season where men need to begin to grow in wisdom before they enter into the economy of power. Power is not something you pray for. I say this with authority. There is no scripture for Genesis to Revelation where the Bible says we should get up and be praying for power. It said you shall receive power after. Under that statement. After the Holy Spirit has rest upon you. And you receive Holy Spirit after you have grown into maturity. That is you will receive Holy Spirit upon. Under that statement. Holy Spirit within enter into you at salvation, but Holy Spirit upon enter into you at a season where you have grown in wisdom. I don't know why we left the scripture and begin to follow some realms. Some people are just talking dimension, realms, realms, realms that doesn't have establishment in the word of God. <laughs> ah, why can't we follow Jesus? Jesus gathered the disciple and he used theory and he have yet to teach them. 
He was teaching them the way of the kingdom. The disciples were growing in stature and in wisdom. Jesus never gathered them and asked them to start praying in a tongue. Jesus did not gather them on the mountain and pray overnight. Whenever Jesus wants to pray, pray alone. But whenever he wants to teach his disciples, he asked them to sit down and begin to teach them the way of eternity. And after he taught them for three and a half years, he asked them to go and tarry. Kai, they only tarry for nine days. <laughs> he didn't even ask them to go and wait, to go and be praying. He just, just said, go and tarry. That's all. They had one that had fasting and prayer to him by themselves. Go and wait. Either they fast or they fast. As long as Jesus said, go and wait. They are qualified to wait. They are qualified to receive. So it has nothing to do with whether they pray for nine days. That day that the Pentecost come, it, is, it has been ordained from heaven to come on the day of Pentecost. Because it has something to do with that, that day. It has something to do with that season. So you have to follow the pattern through with Jesus and tie into the economy of supernatural manifestation. We also saw the pattern through with Jesus build his disciple to enter into the same season. But it's unfortunate today that we left this template and begin to follow a pattern that is not consistent with the handwriting of God in the realm of the spirit. The pattern we see Jesus in the life of Jesus is that he grew in wisdom for 18 years. And when the eternity see the maturity in him and they said, this is my beloved son. Heaven opened. The spirit of God rest upon him. Get this. The spirit that rest upon Jesus on the, on the river Jordan wasn't the, the spirit within. It was spirit upon for assignment. Jesus was born by the spirit. He had spirit right from, the, right from his birth. The spirit of God has been in Jesus right from birth. So Jesus didn't just receive Holy Spirit within but he received Holy Spirit upon on that day. And the purpose of Holy Spirit upon is for manifestation of assignment. The purpose of Holy Spirit within is to grow you in wisdom. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit within is to give, is to teach you, is a teacher. And what teacher gives is wisdom. So when Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14, he said, allow me to go. If I didn't go, I know that spirit will not come. And that comforter will not come. When he come, he will teach you all things. Wisdom is a manifestation of teaching. So the first spirit every believer must have is the spirit within and later the spirit of Paul. Spirit of Paul come for assignment and spirit of Paul doesn't come until you have matured. The spirit of Paul is your inheritance on this earth. It is the one that determines your manifestation. Spirit within determines the fruit of the spirit that will begin to produce out of your life. It determines the level of spiritual understanding that you have. It determines the capture and the stature of the reality of the wisdom that will begin to find expression in your life. But when it comes to spirit of Paul, it's for assignment. So the disciples receive spirit within before Pentecost and they receive spirit of Paul on the Pentecost. They receive spirit within in John 20 verse 22. You can confirm that. And Jesus draw them there. John 20 22. And he breathed into them and he said, receive the spirit. So they receive the spirit within in John 20 22 and they receive the spirit of Paul in John, in Luke, in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 3 verse 1. The same thing of Jesus, when you look at the book of Luke chapter 3, it's in verse 22, and the Bible says, and the, 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 the Spirit of God rest came as a dove, and rest upon, it came upon, underline the statement, upon. So it didn't come within, it came upon. So and when Jesus wanted to begin his assignment, in Luke chapter 4 verses 18, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He didn't say the Spirit of the Lord is within me. The spirit of the Lord within doesn't come to heal the sick. The spirit of the Lord within doesn't come to raise the dead. He said, The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me for a certain dimension of supernatural assignment to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the sick, to open the hands of the blind, to preach deliverance to those in captive. That is the assignment of the spirit of Paul. But when it comes to the spirit within, it came to grow you in wisdom. Ah, my dear God, I don't know if somebody is getting the difference between the two. The spirit within came to grow you in wisdom, but the spirit of work came to manifest a certain dimension of supernatural grace in your life. I'm teaching you now by the spirit of Paul. I'm calling to the teaching of his by the spirit of Paul. The spirit of Paul me is manifested as a certain dimension of teaching grace. But the spirit within is a certain dimension of spirit that every believer must have. And that purpose of that spirit is to teach you all things. To make you to grow in wisdom. So every believer is entitled to grow in wisdom. 
is the title. Because until you wisdom is what determines your maturity, that you are in crisis 1992, doesn't mean you are mature. You can be growing in religion and not growing spiritual. Highest percentage of the believers we have in the body of Christ today, they are growing religiously, but they are not growing spiritual. Because one of the evidence to know that you have grown is that heaven will open and a certain spirit will rest upon you, and that spirit will begin to function effectively in a certain dimension of supernatural manifestation. If there is no mark of any supernatural manifestation that is manifesting in your life consistently, under my word, consistently, that people can see and notice that you are a man that have had a encounter with God, it means you have not yet grown. <laughs> ah, I say this to you today. The secret of entering into supernatural is growing in wisdom. Tell somebody beside you, go and grow in wisdom. Because the pattern to which Jesus grow and enter into ministry, that is the same pattern he taught his disciples. Jesus grown in wisdom for 18 years. They never open. And the Holy Spirit rest upon him. And he anointed him for assignment. The same thing, he, t- he taught his disciples for three and a half years. He never called them into fall and die prayer. There, there's no manifest. They were, they were no, nothing apple, nothing gymnastic. They didn't break any shear. They are with Jesus. They didn't break any shear. I don't know. <laughs> the disciples were with Jesus for good three and a half years. Jesus was downloading, eternal, was downloading eternal relevant information into their memory. And when they grow for certain years, certain season, Jesus now said, Now it is time for assignment. Because you must grow in sonship before you begin, before eternity will begin to commit kingdom assignment into your hand. And then I went into Pentecost. Jesus said, Go and tarry, go and wait for me. And Jesus released a certain dimension of the eternity uh, of manifestation in eternity. That is the same evil pattern I see myself in supernatural. When God began his journey with me, he, I was growing in wisdom first. He exposed me to scripture, exposed me to spiritual material. I was listening to different messages. For years, I was busy growing in wisdom. And suddenly, a certain dimension of supernatural, I entered into a certain encounter. I didn't even pray for it. I didn't pray for it. I entered into a certain encounter of the supernatural. And a certain dimension of supernatural grace began to find expression into my life. And that is what gave me ordination into ministry. Why do we leave this template? Why do we abandon this template and begin to think we can produce a certain result different from the template eternity that's put in place for us? Truly, there's going to be manifestation in that your program. But I say this to you. I pity the life of those followers. Because after five years, it will dawn on them that nothing happened in their life. It will dawn on them. You are just only using them for show. You are using them for self-glory. Nothing. They fall under their nothing. Oh, everywhere scatter. There's nobody that doesn't. I also like it. But I must be sincere with myself. I'm not helping these people. I must be sincere with myself. I'm, this is not the solution to their problem. They will remain the same. They will become another religion if they follow this pattern. For hours. Come back today, tomorrow again. We are, we are growing in this spirit. We are. Calm down. Calm down. That's not the process. <laughs> I said this with authority. That's not the process. <laughs> that is a dimension, but that's not the process. The, pro, the, the realm we are, we are trusting God for, that is not the process to enter into it. Let us go back to the scripture. Let's follow the pattern. Jesus grew first in wisdom. Then heaven opened. The spirit upon rest upon him. The same thing to you, you have received Holy Spirit the day you give your life to Jesus. And allow that Holy Spirit to teach you. Expose yourself to revelational teachings. Expose yourself to, to Christian materials. Expose yourself to different messages. Lock yourself inside out with different dimensional messages. Begin to grow first before growing in prayer. Because this, this is the pattern. This is the pattern. And I pray honestly that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the next teaching, we will talk about the efficacy of power and the efficacy of wisdom as a major tool of the born of the gain of the born again. I'm not trying to underrate power that I mentioned in this teaching. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It is in the 10th next teaching you will see the efficacy and the role of power as a believer and also the role of wisdom. They both have their role. Jesus never manifests wisdom alone in his ministry. There is a certain dimension of supernatural manifestation finding expression in his life. 
but that dimension doesn't come until it first grow in wisdom. So I'm trying to set the priority. I'm not condemning prayer. I'm not condemning power. I'm trying to focus us on what is needed to enter into that prayer, to enter into that, into that power. Power doesn't come by long prayer. It comes when you grow in wisdom. Because no matter how you pray, God cannot commit kingdom power into your hand if you don't have the stature to hold the power. I pray God will bless us in Jesus' name.